They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Luckily for you, elder baby squids, that sentiment does not apply to you. You're not a dog after all, you're a squid, remember? A lot of beginner motorcycle content is catered towards reckless, broke, and irresponsible young bucks who need to know the cheapest, easiest, and safest way to get into motorcycling. But what about an older person? One who is more financially established, more responsible, and more likely to be trusted to stay alive on a bike larger than a Ninja 400? Well, that's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned. One of the major differences between a 20 year old who's getting into riding and say a 35 year old who's getting into riding is the size of their financial girth. A lot of best motorcycles for beginner videos are heavily price conscious, showing the best bang for your buck in a motorcycle that is under five grand or so. But what if money is less consequential? Maybe your pet pet passed away and you inherited a hefty lump sum, or maybe you've just been in your career for a while and you've been savvy with your cash and you can comfortably afford to spend a little bit more on your first motorcycle. Now, not only will an older beginner rider likely have a bit more disposable income, they'll likely also be trusted with a slightly more powerful motorcycle. A motorcycle that I think would be a great fit for an older, more financially equipped, and more responsible beginner would be something like an MT-07. An MT-07 brand new costs right around 8200 bucks, which isn't going to break the bank for many people. And for an older rider, it will be much cheaper to insure a new motorcycle with full coverage than it would be for a younger rider in their early 20s. Also, just so the Suzuki simps don't get pissed off, an SV-650 would work fine too, but for the sake of argument, we're using the MT-07 today, okay? Relax. SV-660 is a good bike. Don't worry. The MT-07 makes a claimed 75 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque, which might be a little spicy for an 18-year-old fresh out of their MSF, but should be completely manageable for a beginner who has some years of life experience under their belt. Older people are generally and typically more risk averse, which is probably a good characteristic to bearing the full weight of being a full blown 30 year old adult. Historically, a lot of beginner riders who get into motorcycling later in their life end up being attracted to bikes from Harley Davidson. That's probably who the biggest purchasers of brand new sportsters off the showroom floor is, older beginner riders. I still wouldn't say buying a brand new Harley Davidson of any kind is the best move for a beginner, just considering the cost alone. And remember, used Sportsters are a dime a dozen, so don't buy a new one if you can afford it and then lose your ass when you try to resell it. Well, actually, maybe now that they're not making Evo Sportsters anymore, they'll hold their value better, but probably not. They made like a billion of them. Most other Harley Davidson motorcycles cost close to $20,000 or more, and just because you can afford it, it doesn't mean you should. Now guys, I've always considered some bikes to be works of art, and judging by your comments on our videos, including Turbo Hayabusa's with Nightmare Before Christmas paint jobs, I'm not alone. Even Andy Warhol, one of the greatest American artists of all time, thought so too. And Andy loved riding motorcycles and painting them as well. Check this one out. This painting Warhol made is called Miniola Motorcycle. Now, I might be biased, but I think this is a masterpiece. And get this, it's estimated to be worth at least $3 million. Crazy, right? I recently learned paintings like this can become much, much, much more valuable over time. In certain cases, paintings can increase in value even more than some stocks. That's why some billionaires invest 10 to 30% of their wealth in art. And now you can too with Masterworks. Masterworks is unlocking the once exclusive art market. Now regular folks like you and me can invest in multi-million dollar paintings like the Mineola motorcycle without needing to break the bank. Masterworks makes it easy to invest in Arch. Their research team analyzes thousands of data points to find financially attractive works, buy them, and then let you buy shares representing an investment in that painting. It's pretty genius if you ask me. And these guys know what they're doing when it comes to picking the artwork. In eight of their last nine exits, they've delivered rent returns of 13.9% to their investors. With results like that, it's no wonder nearly 600,000 people have signed up. So while you might not be whipping around Austin, Texas in a clapped out Turbo Hayabusa, you can now invest like the folks who do, because you can't buy a Turbo Hayabusa unless you invest the big bucks. And my friends at Masterworks are giving my viewers priority access to invest in their newest offerings. Just click the link on the Masterworks link in the video description to get started. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. So don't delay, invest like the billionaires, and check out Masterworks in the link in the description. Same thing with buying a brand new super expensive Ducati or BMW. Older guys are really into brands like that, not sure why, they want to be on a Panigale V4S and the Ducati track suit and the Ducati sunglasses and the I'd rather be on my Ducati bumper sticker on their car. I'd say it's probably inadvisable to spend more than ten dollars or $12,000 or so on your first motorcycle despite your age or your net worth. All for the same reasons a youngster shouldn't spend too much. You may drop and damage it or grow tired of it and riding in general, and now you have an expensive paperweight in your garage. 
Oh yeah, I got sidetracked. So motorcycles other than the MT-07 that could be good first bikes for an older beginner rider would be as follows. If you're older and more interested in a cruiser style motorcycles, steer clear of the showroom floor sportster and instead consider a bike like the Indian Scout 60. Like the normal Scout, the Scout 60 also comes in bobber trim, which I feel inclined to mention it since it seems to be the preferred style for Scout enjoyers, but unlike the normal Scout, the Scout 60 uses a slightly smaller 999cc V-twin engine that is making a more manageable 78 horsepower compared to the 100 ponies made by the Scout with the larger 1130cc engine. The Scout 60 also makes 65 foot pounds of torque. In running order, the Scout 60 weighs about 548 pounds, which may be a little bit heavy for some beginners, although the super low 25.5 inch seat height makes it super manageable. Plus, the extra curb weight means you'll be less likely to get in trouble with those 78 ponies. The Indian Scout 60 is a little pricier than something like an MT-07, coming in just shy of $11,000. The Honda Rebel 1100 is a little bit cheaper, coming in at $9,500, and is a really nice contemporary cruiser motorcycle, but it is making nearly 90 horsepower, so for a beginner rider, regardless of age, you'll we'll have to watch yourself a little bit while taking advantage of some of those ride modes. An older rider with the right amount of cash could also be pretty well suited on a Triumph Bonneville T100 if they were interested in the retro heritage aesthetic. The T100 only makes about 65 horsepower and 60 foot-pounds of torque, and it weighs in a little over 500 pounds, making the power pretty manageable for most beginner riders. The only thing that makes it better suited for someone older is the price tag, which comes in at $10,795. If you're more interested in the adventure bike segment, which I wouldn't be surprised because the older rider gets, the more attracted to the ADV lifestyle, highlighter safety vest gear and all that they become, I would recommend the Tenere 700. Most other adventure bikes are going to be too expensive or too big, too powerful, too heavy. The T7 uses the same parallel twin engine as the MT-07 and the R7, but outfitted with some more off-road capable components like longer travel suspension knobby Pirelli Scorpion tires, and a fairing and handguards. Oh yeah, an R7 would be a good option too if you were looking for a fully fared sport bike. Like the MT-07, the Tenere 700 is pretty value driven as far as ADV bikes go and costs right around 10,500 bucks. Okay, I think you get the idea on which sort of bikes would be suitable for an older beginner rider and which ones wouldn't, but how else will the experience for a new rider in their mid 30s differ from one in their early 20s? The next thing that comes to mind for me is the gear you purchase. Typically when first starting out, a younger rider will pull together as much cast as possible and buy practically the absolute cheapest gear imaginable that will still keep them safe. That's what I did when I started riding. For an older rider that has a little bit more money to play with, they don't need to buy the cheapest stuff just to upgrade a year or two later. They can comfortably spend to buy some nice gear from the start. Maybe spending closer to three or four hundred bucks as opposed to 150 bucks off the bat might land you with a helmet that you'll ultimately end up enjoying and keeping for longer and saving you more money in the long run. It's kind of like when you buy toilet paper in bulk, you end up saving more on a cost per unit basis. Typically, ponying up money for gear means you keep it longer. Similarly, having a couple extra hundred bucks dedicated towards a higher quality jacket or pair of boots will be worth the extra purchase price, trust me. That advice can really be said for all new riders, but I understand many younger beginners just don't have that much disposable income. And it's better to sort of have any gear when you're starting out instead of just holding out and hoping you can afford that Dainese later down the road. Outside of being able to afford nicer bikes and better gear, there are some less tangible things an older beginner rider will be able to take advantage of, most notably their time. For many people, your 20s are over in the blink of an eye. Living fast and loose from one weekend to the next, college, job changes, moving, weddings, starting a family, so on and so forth. And for some, life can start to slow down a bit once you're in your mid-30s and so many aspects of your life are no longer in flux. You're more established and with that time and freedom it comes with it can allow you to pursue motorcycling more as a skill and a craft than just a fun way to commute with your desk job. You can have the time and financial means to pursue more interdisciplinary advanced rider training and courses or pursue track day riding or off-road riding. Because if we're being honest, track days and off-road riding can be both prohibitively expensive for many young riders. You'll need a truck to transport your bike to and from the track and trail, a dedicated track suit for riding days and dedicated off-road boots, extra protective gear for motorcycle trail riding. Do you see how this stuff starts to add up? Not to mention a dedicated dirt bike unless you started on a dual sport. 
And even then, the more you pursue either track day or off-road riding, the more you'll realize the inadequacies of your road-going motorcycle and you're likely will desire more specialized machinery for each. And if you're experienced enough to have the means to be able to comfortably pursue these endeavors, that is great. Maybe you don't spend 11 grand on a new motorcycle, instead you spend five grand on a used SV650 and five grand on a CRF250L for off-road trail fun. An older rider with deeper pockets will definitely have more of an opportunity to explore the nether regions of motorcycling beyond just commuting on a beginner bike. The last thing I want to mention about being an older rider getting into motorcycling is the ability to turn it into a family activity that creates an opportunity to bond together and give your children, if you have them, or your spouse, a lifelong hobby that they can pursue too. Get your kid on a dirt bike when they're five and they'll be one of those lustrous few 18 year olds that rides a Jix or Thou to high school. But honestly, being able to get your spouse or kids or dog or whoever into motorcycling with you can be really awesome. Maybe the Harley dealership will give you a family discount if you go and buy a Road King for you and then an Iron 883 for your old lady like they want you to do with their marketing materials. And if your spouse doesn't want to ride their own bikes, they can always ride along with you and you can go on adventures together. Motorcycling in general can be super therapeutic to just focus your mind and be in tune with the machine and be able to share that experience with your family member can be a worthwhile experience as well. Same with the kid. Kids can ride with you too. Didn't see that funny kid motorcycle harness from last week. But honestly, harness or no harness, it can be a cool experience to share riding with your children and keep them to develop an interest in motorcycling. And when they're old enough, you can get them on their own little dirt bike or something and then get them into youth track racing and train them day in and day out for years until you can be 100% confident they are in fact the next Mark Marquez. The end. So there you have it, how to get into riding as an older beginner. This was an interesting video to make and had me thinking about the different perspectives that people come into motorcycling with as an older rider. I guess I hadn't thought about it much because I'm not that old and I started when I was young. And yeah, that was kind of cool to make. Take a minute to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks again to Masterworks for supporting today's video. Be sure and check them out in the description below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Fact. Well, we're about to enter the year 2023 according to the Gregorian calendar, according to the Ethiopian calendar, which follows alternate calculations, it is only 2015. Take us back, boys. Goodbye.